Well, you got really got uh, small hands, but uh, <laughs> that's why the chip looks so big. But it's a 25 millimeter deep cut yeah, in uh, Kron Molybdane uh, steel. Yeah. We're at WFL Milturn Technologies in Linz in Austria. Now, as you can see behind me, this is a huge machine, the M150. But first of all, WFL, just Milturn, is that correct? This is correct, yeah. Since uh, the foundation of the company more than 25 years ago, uh, we are focusing exclusively on uh, manufacturing Milturn machines. So all your expertise, so all your technology goes into this type of machining. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Okay, now this machine, as you can see, it is making us look quite small, which is a, a feat in itself. A little bit, well, first of all, what application is this? So we are manufacturing a shaft for an electrical motor or a, a generator here on, on this machine, yeah. Okay, and it's going to be quite a specialized machine. We'll come to other applications in a little while, but a really impressive machine. But you've up, well, upgraded it since last time, is that right? Yeah, this is correct. So this is, um, and the next evolution yeah, of our M150 series, yeah, uh, we have uh, modified the design of the machine bed and uh, the lower guiding system, so the machine can now carry a maximum workpiece weight of up to 25 metric tons. Yeah. Wow, that's a huge, huge component, obviously. What about the swing and the length? So the maximum center distance here is 12 meters, and uh, the maximum swing is uh, 1,500 millimeters. Again, a huge, huge component, but it's going to be specific applications. We'll come to those in a little while. But it's full five-axis machining. This is correct, yeah. So uh, all WFL Milturn machines are full five-axis machines. Yeah. So any kind of five-axis milling uh, operation can be done on this machine. Okay, so I think if we move down here, but yep. just look at the controls. So you've, it's a Siemens in the background, but it's your own control system, is that correct? Well, uh, we use Siemens control, yeah, and of course our software bases largely on Siemens. However, there is certain software options on that machine that uh, we have uh, taken a step further yeah, than Siemens, and uh, that are WFL development, basically. Yeah. And another development that WFL is this part here, which is the eye control. Is that correct? Correct. So eye control is our uh, latest uh, process monitoring uh, software for the machine. Uh, what's new is that we can now integrate up to 16 external sensors and that allows us to, uh, for example, uh, use intelligent boring bars or intelligent tools in the machine. Yeah. Okay, so you're monitoring if it's vibrating and then bringing the tool away so you're not getting damage on the component? Yes, exactly. The tool yeah. or the machine? It's all about protecting the component and the machine. Yeah because if you have a very expensive workpiece, which such large components typically are, yeah, then you want to make sure you don't uh, destroy it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. Okay, so you're doing your five axis machining, but it's not just milling or turning. There's a number of different applications you can do on this machine. Yeah, this is true, yeah. So, of course, milling and turning is uh, our bread and butter, yeah. But uh, since our philosophy is uh, clamp once, machine complete, uh, we have to incorporate a large number of other technologies like drilling, deep hole drilling, uh, all types of gear machining. Yeah. Okay, I think we should move down so we can yeah. actually view some, some, of the th some of the actual processes here which you can see on this component, really impressive stuff. But also, it's difficult materials. Yes, I mean, this is uh, typically where WFL shines. Uh, whenever it comes to difficult to machine materials, if it's very hard, uh, steel alloys, titaniums, inconel, yeah, all of these things, that's really uh, where we can shine and uh, use the strength of our machine. Okay, you say the strength of the machine, it's also the power because your milling head there and also the spindle. Well, it's not, you don't call it a milling head, what do you call it? Yeah, we call it the turning boring milling unit. Yeah, this is really the heart of a WFL machine. Yeah, this is also the most protected and secure area in our workshop. Yeah, where we would not take MTD CNC to right. make a video. Not even MTD are allowed in there. Are not even MTD. <laughs> and uh, the turning boring milling unit uh, that you can see here has 45 kilowatt power. We can go up to 55 kilowatt power, and uh, we do up to 8,000 RPM of. Uh, but that's sort, of pa speed. that sort of power, that sort of speed, it's got a hearth coupling to make it super rigid. Yeah, so um, the turning boring milling unit, as you can see, is uh, installed on, let's say, the cross slide. Yeah? 
and it swivels uh, uh, around the B-axis and this B-axis can be indexed in a Hurt coupling um, and uh, for very heavy machining operations in turning or uh, milling we can engage the Hurt coupling to have a higher holding torque. Now something I prepared earlier, you could say, you know, big powerful cut, so I've got an example here, I mean that's, I do, my hands aren't small, what, that 25 mil? Well, you got really got uh, small hands, but uh, <laughs> that's why the chip looks so big. But it's a 25 millimeter deep cut, yeah, in uh, chrome molybdene uh, steel. Yeah, really impressive stuff. But having a component this big and doing it all in one hit is going to have other problems. So, how do you measure it, for example? Uh, when you machine such a large component, it's difficult uh, for customers, uh, you know, to move it out onto a CMM machine, and uh, that triggers a whole new set of problems, which we try to address here. We, are, uh, we have software and hardware integrated here to measure, for example, uh, gears, as you can see on the right side of the part. This is a gear with module 38, and uh, which can uh, measure and scan the entire gear teeth here and essentially print a, a measuring protocol for gears. Okay, what about boring? So if you're boring, say, to three meters in length, you're not going to have a probe for that. Um, well, we also have done probes that deep, but typically we would use a, a ultrasonic measuring device yeah, to measure the wall thickness and uh, the runout of the bore. Okay, that, yeah. and then scanning as well. You, you could probe it, but you can laser scan, I understand, but not, it's not on this machine at the moment. That's correct, it's not on this machine, but yes, we can also use a laser scanner like we have on the M50 here at the show yeah, uh, to measure uh, the, the part. Yeah. However, this is essentially uh, to double check, for example, if uh, you have a lot of holes in a component, yeah, let's say you have 500 holes in a component, yeah, you want to make sure every hole is there and the programmer didn't forget one. You can compare the actual component in the machine with the laser scanner with the 3D solid from the design department. Okay, so again, precision, high precision parts, complex yeah. parts, made really, really simple. Finally, just a couple more applications that you, you know, this would be good for. So this would be good for, uh, of course, all types of heavy parts, for example, for big and large uh, gear shafts for the mining industry, for paper mills, yeah, for the oil and gas industry and uh, this uh, type of industries. Yeah. Christian, great overview of this huge machine, the M150, complex, high precision part, mill turn parts from WFL, mill turning technologies. Brilliant.